In the Season 2 episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, Q Who, the omnipotent interdimensional prankster Q shows up to, in his own way, warn Picard of the incoming threat of the Borg. In this episode, we find out Guinan, the ship's bartender, is older than she looks, as she has met Q before, about 200 years earlier. This brief interaction sets up a rivalry that was never explored. Even in Star Trek Picard Season 2, a time-traveling Q meets a younger Guinan and acknowledges that he knew her in another time and place, but we never get specifics on the nature of this rivalry. The thing about Q is, he seems to be an antagonist, but he's really not that bad. In his first appearance in the TNG premiere encounter at Farpoint, he threatens the extinction of humanity, but his presence and threats puts caution in the steps of Picard and his crew, allowing them to discover the bandy people they were negotiating with had enslaved a giant jellyfish. Without Q putting humanity on trial, the Enterprise crew might not have investigated what was going on, so Q indirectly helped. In the TNG finale All Good Things, Q quantum leaps Picard across time and space, allowing Picard to save the the entire universe. Sure, sometimes he's there to stir the pot, but he's not evil. And if he's not evil, then what does that make Guinan? We never got much development of Guinan. She seems trustworthy, she's good at talking people through their problems, we never see her do anything malevolent, so why does Q tell Picard she's untrustworthy and shouldn't be on the ship? I believe the original intention was to subvert expectations on both Q and Guinan. When we first meet Q, he seems evil, wanting to eliminate humanity, but he turns out to be alright. And when we first meet Guinan, she seems alright, but we would eventually find out she has ulterior motives. Their interactions in Q Who make it obvious to me that this was planned and for whatever reason they bailed on this idea. Maybe they felt they couldn't keep Guinan on the ship if they revealed she was the not nice counterpart to Q and they didn't want to miss out on future interactions between her and other characters so they kept her backstory vague. All we find out about her is that she was maybe spying on Earth in the 1800s. Having her be some other kind of interdimensional being with designs on the mortal plane would have been much more interesting than what they did. Maybe the Q Continuum and the Arians have a non-interference pact with mortals, and both Q and Guinan are breaking the rules by nudging the Enterprise here and there. That might explain why they're surprised to see each other. And they can't report the other's presence on the ship without revealing they too were breaking the rules. Maybe each race has some kind of bet about humanity, and Q and Guinan are each trying to sway the actions of the Enterprise in favor of what their species bet on. Or what if the Arians don't trust humanity? They fear this species that a couple hundred years ago wasn't even able to leave their planet. Now they're afraid the humans are going to make a mess of the whole universe, so Guinan is sent to keep an eye on them. If you don't like the idea of Guinan having sinister motives, she eventually falls in love with the crew of the Enterprise and betrays her mission. Or if the Borg assimilated the Elarians and scattered what was left of them across the universe, maybe Guinan is one of the only ones taking the threat of humanity seriously. She's an agent without an empire to report to, but she still believes in this mission until she sees how valiantly humanity tries to fight against the Borg and she realizes her misgivings were out of place. There's any number of ways you could have followed up on this bit from Q Who and and still keep Guinan for semi-regular appearances. I won't say TNG was broken because it didn't go in this direction, but it's a missed opportunity that, for my money, would have been more interesting than what they did. But while I'm here, in Q Who, Q says the dealings between him and Guinan were two centuries ago. Looking at the Trek timeline, that would almost place their previous meeting during the time that Jonathan Archer and his crew were on the first Enterprise, give or take a decade. Wouldn't it have been cool to see Q and Guinan on Enterprise, but keeping with my idea that each race has a non-interference thing, they don't make Make themselves known to the main characters? People unfamiliar with TNG wouldn't have cared about these characters, but that didn't stop them from turning the Enterprise finale into an episode of TNG where Enterprise is just a holodeck simulation Riker is watching in his spare time. So they could have made this work. The Enterprise is on some important mission, Guinan and Q are there pretending to be red shirts, we get to see them snipping at each other, but the main characters don't. This mission is even more important than the main characters realize, we see some hijinks where Q and Guinan are able to covertly sway the mission in their favor. Fan servicey? Yes. But again, if you're dead set on callbacks to TNG, at least do something interesting that doesn't assassinate all of Enterprise and alienate the entire fan base. This isn't super high up on things I wish could have been done in Trek, but I do think it would have been cool. What do you guys think? Let me know, and in the meantime, I'll see you guys next week with some other videos. Until then, have a good one.